John Gazer. Today we're going to work on how to take a proper forage sample and, and feed sample for your dairy. As we look at moisture, nutritive content, energy content changing day in, day out, historically we've understood that moisture content varies, so we need to look at moisture day in, day out. But professors uh, Norm St. Pierre and Bill Weiss have recently done some work looking at forage variability day to day, finding nutritive variability can change from day in, day out enough where it might impact rumen health. So there's been a lot of discussion on how often we should be sampling, what type of sampling we should be doing, how we should be balancing diets to improve uh, precision and performance on your dairy or your feedlot. Today we're again going to work through forage sampling and then also commodity sampling. We're going to talk about the per uh, correct way to do things. Before getting started, you can see we're in front of a bunker here today. I want to stress safety. So as we work in front of larger feed centers and we work in front of larger bunkers, pits, piles, I'm standing a bit ways away and, and so I've got my teammate Buffy here and, and Jordan as well. Only approach and enter a feed center when there's a couple people. You don't want to approach a feed center if we're anywhere beyond 12 to maybe 15 foot in height because safety. There can be cave-ins, things along those lines. So we want to be cognizant of safety as we're working in and around larger bunkers and, and piles. I'm going to talk generically about sampling from a silo today. That could be a pit, it could be a bag, it could be a, could be a traditional upright, it could be a clamp if you're in Europe. Uh, it could be a trench if you're in other parts of the world. So again, we're going to talk about anything where uh, forage is in silo. I'm going to talk about that as a silo today. So we're going to be sampling from the silo. Here we're in front of corn silage. And we've got about an 80-foot wide bunker today. So there's going to be a couple thumb rules. The first one being, as a consultant working in support of a dairy or feed, feed yard or feedlot, I'm going to be looking to, to get a nutritive and energy analysis on anything that's fed at a greater rate than three pounds. So if you're feeding more than three pounds of an ingredient, to your cattle, to your dairy cows, I think it's a pretty good idea to have uh, some idea of what nutritive content that's contributing to the TMR, to the diet. Uh, so at feeding corn silage at 50 to 60 pounds, clearly we're gonna be looking at forage sampling uh, routinely. What makes sense for your dairy, for your feedlot, as far as how frequent to be sampling, work with your consultant, work with your advising team uh, to determine what's, what's right for your dairy. I know Professors St. Pierre and Weiss have, have suggested some pretty aggressive sampling protocols and I, I know I've recently rethought uh, my strategy in looking at things potentially uh, every couple weeks as opposed to monthly uh, or six weeks from there. So here we've got an 80 foot wide bunker. So the first thumb rule I had was if we're feeding more than three pounds, let's sample. Let's get some idea of what quality we've got. Uh, and then in regards to subsampling, so when we get in front of the silo here, the aim is to adequately represent or accurately represent all the feed here. So there's thousands and thousands of tons. How do we get that? thousands of tons represented in a quart size sample. That's really all we need at the Forge Analysis Laboratory. It's about a pound sample, uh, 500 grams. And again, that can be done in, and stored in some quart bags, which I've got here in my pocket. So the second thumb rule, again, is gonna be how many subsamples do we need to take from a pile such as this in order to accurately represent all the thousands of tons of feed? I'm gonna tell you about one subsample into our bucket for about every 10 foot of width, with a minimum of five subsamples, whether it be from a upright silo or a bag, we're going to put those into here and we're going to mix that and similar to a wash machine or your TMR mixer and make sure that we get an accurate sample out of there. You can see here uh, that Jordan's done a nice job uh, and the appropriate way before we even step up to the silo to take a sample, whether it be from a bag or whether it be from a bunker or a pit, uh, a traditional upright is going to be a little bit different, but the, the best way to, to take a sample and feed your cattle is going to be to the face here. You see it done a nice job in defacing, getting uh, as little surface area exposed to oxygen as possible. But deface the feed prior to feeding, ideally as, uh, as close to the feeding time as possible. And then push all of that feed into a central area. And you can see we've got some video earlier where we did, uh, Jordan did a nice job of lifting the feed up, turning it over with the payloader bucket. You could do something like that with a skid steer or a, a front, front end loader. That's the ideal way to prepare forage or feed prior to going into the TMR. Again, we want to go and do blending. Turning feed over just with simple dump, dumping action is going to be the best way to get that forage ready for the day's feeding because there's quite a bit of variability from left to right and from top to bottom across these bunkers. Again, it can vary as much as 6 to 10 percent even uh, within the bunker due to field, environment, genetics, uh, different uh, crops potentially being blended together. So again, we want to try and capture all of that.